16 from verse 1 to uh, 1 to 4 let us see I have say, said all these things to you to keep you from falling away they will put you out of the synagogues indeed the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering services, service to God and they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you that when their hour comes you may remember that uh, I told them to you. Jesus was teaching to the disciples um, the later uh, there will be the time of uh, persecution so before beforehand as Jesus was teaching this then uh, the disciples may prepare their hearts uh, which, is, uh, 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 which will for the things which will come to their lives um. So this scene is very serious. Um, Jesus is giving the disciples the last, uh, last teachings. So before then, there, uh, Jesus also told, told the disciples that the world will hate you as the world hated me. So this hatred will come to you. And then here, then, uh, even you will be chased away. Um, verse 2 it says that they will put you uh, out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when the, whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. So uh, they will put you out of the synagogues. So this will happen to you. So the Jewish people, they had a very strong community. They, uh, they were centered by the two places. Uh, it is synagogue and temple. Uh, so, but then the time will come when they will chase you away from this community, this society. Um, so it's like, when we get a very serious disease, uh, which will spread to other people, then the community will separate you uh, from, from their society. So like that, they will regard you as the uh, people who will spread the something like very poisoning disease. So that is what Jesus was um, teaching them before. But then how was Jesus? Uh, Jesus was uh, killing even those people uh, who had the serious disease, the lepers, who can uh, spread the disease to others. The people who, uh, who are regarded uh, as uh, very dangerous. But then Jesus was a uh, friend friend with them but then to these disciples then the time will come when people will separate you they will uh, put you apart from them so uh, 
uh, it is like the, their destiny when they they are going to the way of the truth, following the truth. Uh, when they are trying to follow the way of Jesus, then they need to face this this kind of uh, time, uh, this kind of destiny. So maybe also if we are uh, also if we put our step to follow Jesus, if we determine to follow Jesus, then maybe this can this kind of things can come to us. People may hate us and even they want to separate us uh, from them. Yeah. So uh, Jesus let, uh, let us to be prepared. Uh, if we are really determined uh, to follow Jesus uh, with all our lives, then uh, maybe this can come to us. Okay. So maybe here then uh, this kind of things are not really happening, but then maybe in the country where the Christianity is really uh, prohibited, then people will experience these things. Then they need to uh, remember this, these verses. Okay. Uh, then, and then it says that, uh, indeed, uh, yeah, verse 2, they will put you out of synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. So what Jesus is teaching, telling them is, the persecution is not coming from the non-believers, persecution, persecution. Uh, these sufferings are coming from the believers. They are thinking that uh, I'm giving the right offering to God, right, suffer, right, right service to God. So from the, our uh, believers, the persecution may come. So they are thinking that uh, this is the uh, right thing to do before God. You can remember Paul, how he was persecuting the Christians at first. Right? It's not that he was just the evil person, but he was very passionate to do the will of God, to do the work of God. So he was thinking that this is the right thing to do it. So let us look at Acts chapter 26. Acts. Acts chapter 26, verse 9 to 11. I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And I did, did so in Jerusalem. I not only locked up uh, many of the saints in prison, after receiving authority from the chief priests, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in all the synagogues and tried to make them blaspheme. And in raging fury against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Yeah. So, even he was making them to bless him, to say against Jesus. And then, verse 9, he says that, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So, this was happening uh, as Jesus was prophesying. Uh, the people who are persecuting, uh, they did. They were thinking that this is the right thing according to the will of God. So this is what Paul realized how he was uh, really against Jesus. So even though you know Gamaliel, Gamaliel was the teacher of Paul, and then he said that uh, 
No, leave them alone. If it is from God, then we are against, we will be against the will of God. So, but then Paul was a disciple of Gamaliel. But then he was really different. He was persecuting Christians a lot. So Jesus was uh, telling the disciples that this time will come to you. You will be persecuted by the believers, believers of God. So we can also learn from here. We may, uh, we may have also like uh, we may judge, judge other believers if we are not really um, thinking well, then we may judge other believers with uh, our own faith. So we need to be careful not to judge others recklessly. Um, and then even like separate them uh, uh, from the society. You know. This is really great pain uh, to the believers. Yeah. So, uh, but then even though this persecution comes, uh, you need to remember my word and uh, you need to keep your faith. This is uh, what Jesus wanted to uh, tell them. Verse 4, uh, it says, uh, verse, yeah, verse 3, and they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. Because they don't know Father and Jesus, then they persecute. They will persecute you. So some people who are persecuting other Christians, then oh, maybe they don't know the will of God, the heart of God, so that they easily persecute other believers. So, uh, we need to be careful also not to do that. Uh, so, verse, yeah, let us go to verse 4. But I have said these things to you, that when their, uh, when their hour comes, you may remember that I taught them to you. So, uh, Jesus is teaching, when you are persecuted, then remember this. I said to you, remember this. So, why we are meditating this uh, uh, John, uh, John uh, chapter 13 to 18, the way of the cross. Actually, this is really uh, sad and dark moment. But then as we are reading this, then uh, we can know uh, uh, this uh, painful story and then also we can remember uh, what happened and then we can also know what can come to us uh, when we live the life of faith then what can come to us as uh, uh, it came to Jesus and the disciples and also it can come to us and then we can have uh, prepared we can uh, prepare our heart. Okay. Let us uh, go more. Verse, uh, verse 4. Okay. Uh. But I have said this thing to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me and none of you asked me, where are you going? So here then we can see how the disciples had become very sad when they, are, they heard that uh, Jesus is going to die. Then their heart was filled with great like, darkness uh, and sadness. Uh, 
So, but then Jesus said that, uh, uh, but now I am going to him who sent me. So, Jesus was uh, thinking, Jesus was regarding this death. Uh, he, he will be killed. The death, uh, but then Jesus was regarding this death is, uh, the, as he's going to the Father. That is going to the one who sent him to this world. I am now going to him who sent me. So uh, maybe we can also think like that. That is not something uh, miserable, but we are going back to Father. We are going back to God. Actually, Jesus' death was not something normal. It's not just uh, very comfortably. Uh, one day, as he sleeps, then he just go. It's not like that. Then how painful, how uh, miserable, how suffering he was. But then, still he was thinking, I am going to my father. So Jesus had this conviction that I am going to Father. I am going to Father. Even though the, the way of the death uh, and also the death itself is great, uh, fearful thing, it's uh, like he become nothing. And then uh, it's something we are entering to the darkness, uh, become nothing. But then he had this conviction, I am going to father and then okay. Jesus was looking at um, uh, this part like um, the good things uh, which he will be uh, even though uh, the, the suffering and pain will come, but the death, uh, it is going to Father. Okay. So Jesus is continually teaching. He could continue to teach and encourage the disciples, uh, the last teachings. Okay. So verse 7, let us read verse 7. Uh, verse 6. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Yeah. This moment, the disciples' heart was filled with the great sorrow. But verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So from here, then Jesus is really uh, declaring something very new and very important thing. This is when the disciples are filled with the great sorrow because they knew that the teacher is going away. Teacher will uh, go to the way of death. And then even the persecution will come to them. Uh, the danger can come to them. Their life can be uh, they, uh, not stable. So this moment came, will come. So they are filled with great sorrow. But then Jesus was teaching, uh, telling them, uh, it's your advantage that I go away because the helper will come to you. If I go away, then another helper will come to you. So Jesus is uh, opening the new era. He is introducing the new era. This is the era of Holy Spirit. So through it then, we can also have the great comfort yeah, 
knowing this uh, where, where we are now uh, living in. Uh, this era is really great. So when Jesus is with them, then Jesus was limited because he was a human being. He was limited in the place and the time. But then if he goes, he, if he goes, then there will be another helper comes who will not be limited with time and the space. So the kind of amazing world will be opening. So the Holy Spirit will be with you in all the situation, all the time, just with you. So that is the great hope Jesus was telling them. So the helper, helper is uh, in English, paraclete, uh, is um, comforter or helper, counselor, this kind of meaning it has. So this word was very new to the disciples. Yeah. Even though you are very sad, but then there will be the new, new kind of era uh, be opening uh, to the child who is crying because father is going to somewhere, then father is comforting the children. Uh, don't, uh, don't cry. If I go, mom is coming. Your mom will come. So don't cry. Don't worry about it. Mommy is, is coming. So Jesus was not uh, leaving them alone as orphans, but then he promised this uh, helper, Holy Spirit will come. Actually, the Holy Spirit uh, is whom really the apostle, apostles and the early church people really experienced it through Acts, right? And also Paul in Romans chapter 8, he was really uh, talking about uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, we are very weak, even we don't know uh, what to pray for, but then Holy Spirit did help us to pray according to the will of God. And also Paul was teaching in the first part of the Romans chapter 8 that uh, even though we are weak uh, with our, uh, our, our power, then we cannot overcome the sins. But then if we, um, we are helped by the Holy Spirit, then we can overcome this uh, sinful nature. Not only we are justified by the power of God, but then from there, the, all the procedure of the sanctification, Holy Spirit should help us so that we can go well. Uh, we can go right way uh, until the end of our lives. That is the work of Holy Spirit. You will overcome the world by the help of Holy Spirit. So we are living in this era of Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is one of the Trinity, the God. So uh, He will come to you. But then if I don't go, this, uh, He will not come to you. So Jesus is giving them a very hopeful information. Uh, as I go, then uh, He can come to you. Yeah. So verse uh, 7, once more, I will read. It says that, Nevertheless, uh, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Yeah. So Holy Spirit is the one who comes come down to this world after Jesus was suffering, uh, crucified, and then uh, resurrected and ascended. Then the time of Holy Spirit has been opened. 
So the uh, yeah. Deep, uh, Jesus did not go to the way of cross. Uh, what would happen? Uh, what could happen? Yeah. Jesus had still the power to forgive others, right? Yeah. He could uh, he could save the people. He could uh, forgive. He could forgive the people uh, because he had that authority as a son. But then the time of Holy Spirit is when all the people can experience uh, God, uh, experience God uh, in wherever they are and what time they are living. So this is great, um, great, great era which was opened through Jesus' death on the cross. So as Jesus died, then he really revealed the great love the great love of God. Jesus' life itself was really the revelation of the love of God. He loved the disciples until the end. And then he died for us, redemption in death. Okay. So this death is really so great. This death is not just one person's death, but then this is uh, the offering for our sins, all our sins, past and then present and the future, Jesus carried all our sins. So Jesus' death is also the great revelation of the love of God. So this great love of God was revealed through cross and then he resurrected and he ascended. So that is the way where Jesus was going. He now he is now going to the Father through this way of cross. Then after that, the great uh, way of the new era will be opening to you. To everyone, any kind of class, any kind of uh, age, there is no discrimination to the all the people who are calling God, then Holy Spirit will come. So this is great benefit for the all the people in this world. So there is no limit, no limit, uh, limit of the people, limit of the time and space. Uh, so there is, this is the era of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So Jesus, uh, he finished this work, the great work, on the cross. So Jesus, uh, when he died, at the last moment, Jesus said that it is finished. So, uh, yeah, this is the last word Jesus said, it is finished. He concluded this great work, uh, and then he could open this new era uh, in this world. So, verse 8, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Uh, very important, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit is taught here, verse 8. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Yeah, so uh, what kind of uh, work Holy Spirit will do? We know uh, Holy Spirit is the truth, the spirit of truth. This is uh, first, first John chapter, Five, verse seven. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the truth. And then, um, chapter, yeah, yeah. John chapter fourteen also, uh, the spirit of the truth. Yeah. So the spirit of the truth. Jesus said that I am the truth. 
Jesus himself is the he uh, is the truth. He is the truth. Yeah. I am the way and truth and the life. And then uh, this when this Holy Spirit comes, then what he will reveal? First the thing is he will teach us about the uh, sin. Yeah. Sin. So uh, when the truth comes, he will reveal the sin. Yeah, so, uh, Jesus, um, he was teaching us the sin, right? Yeah. Uh, what is the sin? Not to believe in Jesus. Not to believe in Jesus. Verse 9 Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Oh. Jesus came to this world to reveal the truth, to reveal God. He became the, uh, the bridge between God and us through, through this revelation. And then he offered himself for the redemption, to, to save us. So to believe in Jesus, this is what we need to do. Jesus said that the work of God is to believe the, the Son which God sent yeah, in John chapter 6. So not to believe in Jesus, this is a sin. Jesus died for our sins. He, he was the redemption in God. When we are the enemy of God, then He died on the cross. And then through it, then He became the bridge between God and us. So He gave this love to us. So through Jesus, then we can come to God. So to believe is what we need to do, to accept Jesus, to accept this love of God, this is what we need to do. But then if we don't believe, then this is the sin. So when we when someone starts to believe in Jesus, and then when he when the person repent, then what happened? The person start to repent the unbelief until now. Jesus died for, for us, but then not to believe. This is the sin. So when we receive the Holy Spirit. So, so the work, the very important work of the Holy Spirit is what? It is not about miracles, you know, many people think that the work of the Holy Spirit is miracle. Something like the healing power. But then, what Jesus taught us, the work of the Holy Spirit is revealing the sin in us. Yeah. So, exactly. Uh, he is giving us that, that recognition about the sin. When we are really repenting, then really, when we are in the Holy Spirit and then repenting our sins, then Holy Spirit reveals us all kind of sins which we did, uh, which we did not really recognize uh, by ourselves, but then Holy Spirit reveals us all the sins uh, so that we can repent. So when the Holy Spirit uh, shines in us, then we cannot hide our sins. So the sin will be revealed through the Holy Spirit. So this is the great work of God, the great work of the Holy Spirit, not something like miracles, uh, but the more greater uh, power is to reveal reveal our sins because when our sins is revealed then we can be saved we can be forgiven by God so this repentance is so important so through through the Holy Spirit our sins can be revealed okay and then another one what is next sin 
and righteousness. God uh, give us this recognition to know the righteousness. What is right? What is wrong? Uh, actually, this was revealed through Jesus, the life of Jesus. What is uh, sin? What is righteous? Because Jesus is the way and the truth. Uh, through his life, then we can know the way, the right way. So when the righteous life comes, then he can be the standard of everything. He can reveal what is the right thing. Right? So when we receive the Holy Spirit, then we can recognize, we can uh, discern what is the right thing. Yeah. But then people in this world, they don't recognize. They don't know what is the right thing. Who is Jesus? Their eyes is blinded. They don't know what is the sin. But then when we receive the Holy Spirit, then we can recognize the, this love of God through Jesus. And also we can know what is the sin. So Apostle Paul, he did not know, he did not recognize Jesus. But then when, uh, when God intervened in his life, then he met Jesus and then he could realize the deep way of Christ. That is what the Holy Spirit uh, did uh, through the life of Apostle Paul. So, Holy Spirit is raising us, uh, uh, sharing us one by one, uh, like the good teacher or uh, good mothers, one by one. He is opening our eyes and then teaching us. And, um, and then another one. And so the righteousness uh, through the way, uh, Jesus said that he is the way. So through the life of Jesus, then uh, we could see the life of love. So Jesus is the revelation of the love of God. Uh, and then uh, he let us know the right way. Okay. And then another one is about the judgment. He will reveal the judgment. So when there is the right thing and then also the sin is revealed, then the judgment can come to us. Okay. So uh, here, uh, then, the pastor was teaching us that what kind of person is the person of uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, so people may think they are the person of love, a uh, person who is comforting others can be the person of Holy Spirit, or the person of grace, then ah, uh, he's person of spirit of God. But then the Holy Spirit's work is also the judgment. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of judgment. Holy Spirit is spirit of the righteousness. So God is judging us through Holy Spirit. God is judging the, the people's pride, the arrogance, and judging them. So this great judgment of God is revealed when Holy Spirit comes. So when the Holy Spirit is filled in us, then also we can also have the, the righteous and then also the Holy Spirit's judgment will come through us, through the people of God. So the time of Holy Spirit is the time of judgment. Time of the righteousness, righteousness is revealed so that the division is coming out. The, the what is it, goat and the sheep, lamb will be divided. So through this division, then the true salvation can come. When there is judgment of God, then there is also the salvation. 
if there is no this kind of division or salvation, then all are mixed. The sin, righteous, righteousness is mixed, then uh, we cannot really experience the, uh, the salvation. But then through the judgment, there is salvation. So the time of Holy Spirit is the time of judgment. So we are living in this kind of time of judgment. So, um, yeah. Verse, um, verse 9, concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Yeah. So the most important sin, the most uh, yeah, big sin is not to believe in Jesus. And verse 10, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you receive me no longer. Uh, yeah. So, I'm going to Father means uh, the ascend, ascension of Jesus. Ascension is a glorious thing. When Jesus come to this world and serve us, and he died for us, and resurrected, and ascended to God, this is the revelation of the love of God. This was re revealed. So, the righteousness, uh, yeah. So this, through the Holy Spirit, uh, we can recognize this, uh, the way of Jesus. This is the right way of Jesus, right way uh, to God. Yeah. This is the way of love. So this is the love of God. Yeah. So we can recognize this. And then, but judgment, yeah. So through verse uh, 11, concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. The so, ruler of this world, uh, so which is uh, ruling this world, the power, uh, the evil, uh, evil ones, uh, it is already judged. Uh, because the true king has come, then the fake king was judged. So already this um, this judgment started. Yeah. Verse uh, 12 uh, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Uh, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He bears, He will speak. He hears, He will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Yeah. Mm. So here are then verse 12. Yeah. He said that uh, still there are many things to teach them, but then uh, they will not, they cannot bear them now. Yeah. So the Spirit of God is not uh, really revealed. Like, uh, Jesus could not teach them all the things at, at once, right? Yeah. So our life. Uh, yeah. We want to know the truth, all of them, but then uh, we need to uh, learn one by one. Maybe the Spirit of God will teach us, guide us one by one. Yeah. When the Holy Spirit comes to us and reveals us the truth, then we can learn one by one as a good teacher. Yeah. He, he teach the students one by one, then we can also learn uh, the truth one by one. So, but then still at the time, the disciples of Jesus, they couldn't understand uh, more. So Jesus couldn't really teach all of them. So then uh, when we are also uh, teaching other people uh, the truth, we are also working 
the work of the Holy Spirit as we are teaching the truth, then through it then people will realize the truth. So we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit so that uh, we can be the good teacher. Uh, so this is really teaching us how we should teach the people. Yeah. So verse 13, it says that when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into, the, into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Yeah. So he will not teach with uh, his own things. He will not speak on his own authority. And then, uh, yeah. So how the work of Holy Spirit, the work of the life will uh, occur through, through us. When, like Holy Spirit, when we are uh, speaking, the word of God, the truth, not, not changing it, not distorting it. If we uh, share it as it is, as it is, yeah. we should not change the word of God. Uh, we should not like uh, create the truth. We cannot create the truth. The truth is truth. So we should not add or subtract, but then we should we should teach as it, as it is. Yeah. So then, when the truth was revealed, then they can experience God. They can experience the life, the salvation. So the teachers are very important. Even though also other work in the church, they are also important. But then the teachers who are uh, teaching the word of God as it is, it's very important. Uh, it's really the uh, work of Holy Spirit as we are teaching it uh, as it is. Then um, the work of Holy Spirit can be done through our lives. Okay? So not talking about our stories, but then we need to talk about uh, the, the story of God, truth. And, and then he will teach us about the future. So uh, he, will, he will speak what to come. And so the word of God is really teaching us about the future, isn't it? Yeah, the vision and the beautiful world which will come. So through this uh, teaching of the future, the hope, then uh, all our despairs and our uh, darkness can go away. When we are teaching about the uh, beautiful, bright future, then uh, all our uh, big burdens can can be released. Okay. And then verse 14. Uh, he will glorify me, or he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Okay. So Holy Spirit will teach about Jesus. Okay. Then um, then verse 15, all that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Okay. So the story of Jesus is also the story of God. Uh, so Holy Spirit is the one who will teach about uh, the story of Jesus. <clears throat> So this era will open, the new era, new world will open. So I hope we can uh, remember the word today, and then we can be the great teachers which, who can uh, teach uh, the word of God through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, uh, not changing it or not 
are talking our own words, but then the, the word of God as it is, uh, so that uh, we can also bring the new word to the people uh, who are listening. So let us pray together. <coughs> Oh, Heavenly Father, this time we thank you for giving us your precious word. Uh, Lord, um, you opened the new, new world uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, it is suffering and resurrection and uh, the ascension. Lord, we want to uh, know the truth uh, and we want to be the people who are uh, walking with the Holy Spirit. Uh, so that uh, this world can also experience the true uh, revelation of God through light. Uh, and they can uh, come to you. Uh, they can also experience this new world. Lord, please be with us and use us and guide us. Uh, we thank you for this time and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.